In the first shots we see the girl running through the night forest in fear, someone is chasing her. The girl is hiding in a cottage when suddenly the phone rings. She reports that she has been kidnapped and taken to some crazy island. When the interlocutor called her last name, Sloane realized she had fallen into a trap. Further events take us a little forward. Julia is walking along the beach, waiting for the plane. Finally, the plane appears in the sky, and Julia hurries to inform Mr. Rourke. He told all the resort workers to smile. When the passengers got off the plane, they were delighted with the picturesque nature of these places. Julia greeted the guests. She is the personal assistant to Mr. Rourke, the owner of a resort called Fantasy Island. According to Julia, anything is possible on this island. Melanie notices that there is no communication here. The guests were taken to their rooms. Melanie unpacked her things and put a picture of a certain young man on the nightstand. Meanwhile, Julia told Gwen that Mr. Rourke was carrying out his client's fantasies. Gwen decided that this was done on the basis of a questionnaire. When Julia went outside, she felt unwell. Gwen saw marks on the floor and began to look around the room. In the mirror she saw a burned man who had suddenly disappeared. In the evening the guests were gathered at the bar. A guy named Patrick met Rax and JD. Despite their different appearances, the guys were brothers. Finally Mr. Rourke came. He told two conditions. Only one fantasy for each guest, and each fantasy must be seen through to the end. The first in line were the brothers. They wrote on their form that they want to get everything. Mr. Rourke took them to the place where the coolest party was held. Suddenly in the midst of the fun a burned man appeared and immediately disappeared. Brax thought he was imagining things. In the morning, Mr. Rourke summoned Gwen Olson, whose fantasy was to correct a past mistake. Gwen confessed that she had always dreamed of having a daughter, but when her boyfriend Alan asked her to marry him, she was frightened and said no. Rourke suggested that the woman reclaim that moment of life, saying that the fantasy was waiting for her behind that door. Gwen was skeptical, but opened the door. Behind it, she saw the restaurant where Alan had once proposed to her. Everything looked just like it did before, down to the smallest detail. Gwen was even more shocked when she saw her beloved. She doesn't understand how Rourke made it happen. She asked Alan not to pretend, because they had not seen each other for five years. Besides, she finds it strange that he hasn't aged at all. Gwen approached Rourke and asked him to stop this madness, but he advised her to go back to Alan and say yes to his proposal of marriage. Patrick and Melanie's fantasies has not yet begun. Patrick confessed that he had dreamed of being in the military since childhood, but he made a promise to his mother that he would not do it. Melanie in turn revealed that her greatest dream is to get revenge on an offender named Sloane who bullied her at school. Melanie wants to swap places with her at least once in her life. She even had to see a psychologist when she was a child. They were interrupted by Mr. Rourke, who told Melanie to go to the elevator and press the button without the floor number. The girl did so. When the doors opened, Melanie found herself in a dark room and saw Sloane tied up. Melanie thought it was a hologram, so she took revenge on her abuser without remorse. It was all very believable. Melanie pressed various buttons, hurting Sloane. The glass was one way, so the girl couldn't see her executor. Suddenly the screen started playing videos of Sloane having fun with someone else's husband. Melanie posted the video to social media. Sloane's husband saw the video. At one point Melanie saw Sloane being kidnapped. That's how she realized that it wasn't a hologram, but the real Sloane. Meanwhile, Rourke took Patrick into the woods and gave him a military uniform. Patrick changed his clothes and suddenly heard a noise. Suddenly there were soldiers pointing guns at him. Patrick began to play along, thinking it was a fun game. He said that he allegedly fought off his detachment, but the soldiers didn't believe him and decided to take him to the lieutenant. While JD and Brax continued to enjoy the party, Gwen had dinner at the restaurant with Alan. He asked her to marry him, and this time she said yes. The brothers changed into expensive suits when suddenly they saw a secret room in the apartments. It is full of weapons. Patrick asked what the soldiers' orders were. They replied that they had to free the American hostages. Patrick was brought before Lieutenant Sullivan. His face looked very familiar to Patrick. The lieutenant was surprised to see his name on Patrick's badge. Suddenly there was gunfire. Patrick was shocked when he realized that people were actually dying here. Meanwhile, Melanie tries to find a way out of the room. Suddenly a man in a doctor's uniform and carrying surgical instruments walks into Sloan's cell. Melanie tried to stop the madness, but she could not. When the doctor took off his mask, she recognized her psychologist. Eventually she managed to neutralize him with electric shocks and water. Melanie then broke the glass and freed Sloane. 
They ran away from this horrible place, ending up in the woods. The brothers continued to enjoy themselves when suddenly all the guests began to be shot at. Brax called Rourke, who Kami said it was the guise of Kalashev, the previous owner of the island. The brothers wanted everything after all, but their fantasies might not appeal to everyone. The Kalashev guys burst into the cottage, pointing guns at the brothers. Meanwhile, Melanie lied to Sloan about being kidnapped too, but she managed to escape. Melanie realized that Sloan didn't recognize her because she had been the underdog at school. Suddenly the psychologist caught up with them. The girls were saved by a man who advised them to go with him if they wanted to survive. Sullivan decided to talk to Patrick frankly. He wondered how the guy got his picture. Patrick said that in the photo he is nine years old with his father. To corroborate his words, he told a story from his childhood. Sullivan doesn't understand how this is possible, nor does Patrick, since his father died more than 27 years ago in a rescue operation in Venezuela. Sullivan says this operation is scheduled for tomorrow. In the morning, Gwen saw a joint wedding photo with the beloved on her phone. She thought it was photoshopped. Rourke assured her that she and Alan had been married for five years. Gwen was convinced of that when she saw Alan looking older. Suddenly Gwen saw a little girl named Lila. Rourke said it was her daughter. Her phone was full of memorable pictures and family videos. Sullivan intends to abandon the rescue operation and escape with his son. Patrick convinces his father not to do it because without him the soldiers will die. It was Sullivan who saved them 27 years ago by covering a grenade with himself. The brothers assure the guys that they had never heard of Kalashov. The leader of the gang took off his mask and demanded to know where the money was. The brothers do not understand what they are talking about. Under torture, JD had to lie that the money was downstairs. The ringleader took Brax down there to make sure. Gwen spends time with her family, which she has always dreamed of. But that's not the past mistake she wanted to correct. She asked for another fantasy, but Rourke turned her down, reminding her of the rules. Damon led Melanie and Sloane to the heart of the island. Here they could see their deepest fantasies. Damon told them that he worked as a private detective. A client asked him to find out the mystery of the island. According to Damon, the island executes fantasies with the help of water. And he needs the girls to get the samples out of here. He gave them the pilot's phone number and told them to flee the island. Sloane realized that Melanie was not a prisoner, but a guest. She is the same ugly girl Sloane used to make fun of at school. However now the girls have no choice but to act together. Gwen notices Julia, who is not feeling well. Gwen confesses that six years ago a man died through her fault. This is exactly what she would like to change in the past, so Gwen needs another fantasy. Mr. Rourke decided to make concessions and change Gwen's fantasy after all. She entered that very room again. As in the past, there had been a fire in the building. Gwen was surprised to see Brax and JD. Of course they didn't recognize her. Nick couldn't open the door and get out. Gwen ran to the aid of a police officer, who happened to be Patrick. He said they had to wait for the fire department, so Gwen went back into the building herself. Brax tried to escape from Kalashov's men and locked himself in one of the rooms. He took a gun and prepared to rescue his brother. Damon believes that the girls should forgive each other for all the wrongs. Suddenly the company was attacked by the psychologist. To save the girls, Damon threw himself on the doctor and fell off a cliff with him. The soldiers were preparing for the hostage rescue operation in Venezuela. Brax stated that if the guys did not follow his orders, he would detonate a grenade. Patrick, Sullivan and the rest of the soldiers mistook Kalashov's men for hostages. Because Brax was wearing a mask, they did not recognize him. However when Brax removed the mask, Patrick was shocked. The fantasies jumbled. Sullivan freed JD. Meanwhile, Patrick and Brax neutralized Kalashov's men. Brax caught the grenade at the last moment. Suddenly JD was shot. A firefight broke out. Sullivan too died in front of his son. Melanie and Sloan returned to the torture chamber. They were able to reach Sloan's husband again. She asked him for help. Even though he was very angry at her for adultery, he agreed to listen. Sloan asked him to call the number Damon had given them. Julia pulled Gwen out of the fire. She couldn't save Nick this time, either. At this time Patrick, Brax, Melanie, and Sloan meet. Their main task. To go to the pier and escape from the island in the airplane. But their plans are thwarted by Rourke. Gwen also arrives, who realizes that they've all been brought together on purpose because of Nick Taylor. It was Brax and JD's roommate. He died because of Gwen, who accidentally set the fire. Melanie was supposed to go on a date with him that evening. The company realized that this was one big fantasy that had to end in the deaths of the participants. 
Upon hearing the plane, the company rushed to flee, but the plane was blown up by Kalashov's men. The participants were wondering what to do now. Melanie remembered Damon's words. They have to destroy the spring of strange water to destroy the fantasies. With the grenade ready, the company headed for the cave. Almost immediately they got lost here. Each of them was haunted by eerie visions from their fantasies. These were their deepest fears. Suddenly Melanie attacked Patrick. Then she went out to Brax and Gwen. As it turns out, this is all Melanie's idea. This was her way of seeking revenge for her lover Nick. In her opinion, all these people are to blame for his death. To distract Melanie, Sloan said she was even more pathetic than she was in school. Seizing the moment, the company dashed off. When they saw the heart of the island, they realized that Julia was Rourke's wife, who had long since passed away. The island however brought her back as she had been when she fell ill. Taking care of her was too hard, and Rourke lied to her that she was his assistant. If Rourke stops fulfilling clients' fantasies, Julia will disappear. He neutralized the grenade, for the fantasy must reach its natural conclusion. But when Rourke saw his sick wife, he realized he didn't want to torment her anymore. Patrick who has survived, begs Melanie to stop this madness. Suddenly Rourke reappears and hints at what needs to be done. Sloan drank water from the spring to fulfill her fantasy. Melanie was dragged under the water. Now she would be with Nick forever. When the grenade fell out of the water, Patrick covered it with himself to save his friends. Gwen woke up in bed. She saw Brax and Sloan, who had saved them. Patrick died like a hero, his father would have been proud of him. The plane flew in for all the survivors. Brax stayed on the island to fulfill his new fantasy of bringing the brother back to life.